and to me and now here's like the gluttons for punishment rant of the day this whole thing is just so toronto maple leafs and i'll tell you why i'm always very quick to say that i love the toronto maple leafs i am proud to call myself a toronto maple leafs fan i've cheered for this team since i was a little boy and i will cheer for them for the rest of my life but at the end of the day when I'm really and truly honest with myself, being a Maple Leafs fan is not fun. It's never fun. Very rarely have we been able just to sit back and enjoy the show. I was talking to a friend of mine who's a big Leafs fan, and he pointed, he pointed out, and he was right, the last time we had a real and true fun season was Matthew's rookie year because expectations were low. The team was young, exciting, winning. They made the playoffs, went out in the first round against the President's Trophy champion, uh, Washington Capitals, but pushed them to six. It was a great effort. They got cheered off the ice. That season, we had a great time. Since then, there's always been something. There's always been drama. There, there was the Babcock shit and the guy that was trying to get rid of contracts like Marlowe's and who's going to sign, who's not going to sign the Nylander thing. There's always something in Leafland. This year... The team went out, started with that bad start. But since that bad start, the Leafs looked great. Matthews and Marner firing on all cylinders. Bunting, Kasha, Kampf looking like great additions. Jack Campbell having the season he was having. Keith tying was he tied toe Blake for one of the best starts to a coaching career in NHL history. Things looked great. This team was on base for, I think, like 120 points at one point. God forbid, God forbid, we were having a good time. So the man upstairs just said, sorry, this can't happen. This isn't allowed, Maple Leafs fans. You have to be miserable and be panicking. It just, it is what it is. Someone in the comments down below, <laughs> comments down below, someone try to convince me that this team's not cursed. Try, try to convince me. I hope you can because I, I'm fully convinced this team is just cursed. I know the team is cursed when I look at Michael Hutchinson's numbers from a few years ago and mm -hmm. you know, Michael Hutchinson, everyone in Leafs nation jokes around about how terrible this guy was. And Oh my God, when, when the Leafs remember, he goes to Colorado, then the Leafs bring him back and people are like, Oh my God, Michael Hutchinson is back. What a disaster. So oh, in that season where he was a complete train wreck, I knew you were going to go here <laughs> 15 games. He had an 886 save percentage. Okay. Peter Morazic right now through 17 games, 884 save percentage. 884. He somehow has a worse save percentage than Michael Hutchinson in that Michael Hutchinson just nightmare season where he couldn't stop a puck. What was Sparks? Sparks had that pathetic year too. I'm sure that's. Oh pretty, yeah, Sparks. I think was was probably very very similar under to that. I should look that up real quick. Yeah, under 900 for sure. Yeah, Garrett Sparks. I remember Leafs Nation thought he was like the next coming of Carey Price at one point. Well, he won. What did he win? He won HL Didn't best he win, goalie. He won, he won goalie of the year in the AHL. Yeah, won the Calder Cup, all that. The whole thing is his first game with the Leafs, he got a shutout and he cried. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, he had cool pads. So that got everyone excited. So Garrett Sparks, 2015-2016. This was the year before Matthews, Marner, and Nylander arrived. 17 games, 893 save percentage. Okay. And then he played 20 games for the Leafs in 2018, 2019. So this is like in the middle of the Matthews and Marner era. Uh, 20 games played, 902 save percentage. Oh, there you go. So Mrazek has been worse than all of those seasons from Michael Hutchinson and Garrett Sparks. And just to put a a bow on this goalie conversation for all the people that, you know, are, are dying to bring in Mark Andre Fleury, Mark Andre Fleury, 43 games played this year, a 908 lot. save percentage. Mm. Jack Campbell, Michael Lepore in 40 games played this year as well, a 914 save percentage. Jack yeah. Campbell's at a 914 and Mark Andre Fleury's at 908 as terrible as Campbell has been. Since the start of December, and he has been really bad. He still has a better save percentage than Mark Andre Fleury this season. So yeah, the Fleury thing, the, the the Fleury thing is just too dramatic. 
it's just way too dramatic and shocking. And it, it'll blow up in the Leafs' face again because we're cursed. But it, it's just not going to happen that Flurry's going to come in and be a superstar in the playoffs and steal games. It just it won't happen. It won't happen. And, and I think the management knows that. They know they're they're banking on a coin flip and uh, and what you'd have to give up. Don't do it. Yeah, do it. with the volatility of goaltending these days, I think management would much rather give up significant assets to bring in a really good defenseman exactly. or another top six forward. And if they are going to bring in a goalie, which I'm sure they are looking at, I think they would rather go the route of bringing in an Anton Forsberg or someone yeah. on that level who you can pick up for, you know, Pennies on, I don't want to say pennies on the dollar because it's not like this guy sucks. Like Anton Forsberg's had a great season, but you're not going to have to give up the assets you would have to give up to acquire a Marc Andre Fleury. And I just yeah. think it makes way more economical sense, just makes more logical sense, really. And I, I think Dubis is too smart to just go all in on Marc Andre Fleury, who honestly, who knows what he's going to provide this team if he does come in here. Yeah. The thing is with a Forsberg, too, you can just, the plan can just be to get him. And then you see how things go for the last 20, 20 games of the season between the three of them. So, and if it, you end up with Campbell uh, as your starter in the playoffs, well, you picked up some goalie depth and you probably had to give up like a second or third for it or something. So it's not the end of the world. What I find hilarious, Leafs fans, let's uh, move back for a second. Remember last summer when we all said to ourselves and screamed on Twitter that we would not give a shit about this regular season, <laughs> that it didn't matter, that we were done getting upset. We were done caring about the regular season because all that mattered was the playoffs. Now, I know people are freaked out right now because this may spill into the playoffs, but we're liars. We're all liars. We care way too much. Come Breaking on, news, Lapore. Leaf fans care. Yeah. Breaking news. All these Leaf fans, and I, I know several Leaf fans who literally told me this face-to-face -face saying they're not going to watch this team in the regular season. Yeah. They don't give a shit until the playoffs start. <laughs> but there's a lot of people that care, including yeah. those people who told me that they weren't going to watch and didn't care about the regular season. They are sure tuning in each and every night and getting pissed off watching these goalies allow four or more goals every single game. So, yeah, yeah it, it's hilarious. We, we just love – we love to punish ourselves. I mean, gluttons for punishment. I mean, what else can we say? But, yeah, we'll see what happens with this goaltending situation, um, whether the Leafs address it at the upcoming trade deadline, whether they decide to just weather the storm. And I even think back to last season, I believe, or was it the season before when they picked up David Riddick? It was last year. That was last year, right? So yeah, it, it, it kind of reminds me of that where maybe they just pick up like a David Riddick type goaltender to just bring him in as an, as an insurance policy. So we'll see what happens, Lapore. but I'm on the same page as you. I, I don't think bringing in Marc-Andre Fleury really is the answer as much as people want to see that happen. But I think it's time to move on now and talk yeah, about just, something other than just, this. Dreadful Just to put the tenure. cherry on the flurry thing, there is also that part of me that I announced on this podcast that I'd give away a flurry jersey if he did get picked up. So I'm not in the mood to spend like two, three hundred bucks on that. So please, leave so let it happen for my sake. If, if you don't want to do it for, or if you want to do it for the uh, the fans in your organization, think about it for a second and try to help your boy Lapore out. 